All right, so in this lecture, let's go ahead and let's make an API call inside the use effect. So we have covered the use effect hook in the previous lecture. And the reason why we will be making an API call inside the use effect is because we want to make an API call at two instances. The first instance where we want to make an API call is when our application first loads. And the next time when we want to make an API call is whenever the query data over here or the search term over here changes. And this is why we will be making an API call inside the use effect hook and not outside of it. All right. So in the previous lecture, we have defined this function demo inside the use effect, which was just for demonstration. So you could get rid of this function here. And instead of this one, now we could create our very own function in order to make an API call. So let's define our own function here. So I would say function and let's name this function as fetch food. So you could name this thing as anything, but I've named it as fetch food. And over here in this function, we simply have to make a API call to the endpoint, which we have defined up over here in Postman. So what you could do is you could copy the entire endpoint, which we have here. Or another thing which you could do is you could simply go ahead and split up this particular URL into different parts. So a better thing to do with this is that you could split up the URL into different parts so that it's not that complicated. So let's do that splitting up over here. So what you could do is you could define that URL here. You could even define that outside the component. It would still be absolutely fine. So here I'll create a URL here. So I would say const URL is going to be equal to and let's copy this URL, which is the endpoint URL. So let's copy it till the search. So I'll copy this, paste it up over here. So that forms one part of our URL. And after that, we have this question mark query. So let's define that later. And along with the URL, we also have this API key as well. So it's actually better if you save that API key into a variable as well. So I'll copy this and I would say const let's say api underscore key equals this all right now one thing which you need to remember is that whenever you are building some real world react applications you cannot save your api keys directly over here inside a file and that's because it's not safe to save your api key into files but instead these api keys should be placed inside environment variables so environment variables are something which you build whenever you are actually deploying your application and as we are not doing that for the sake of simplicity we will place our api keys here all right so we now have the url we now have an api key as well and we have the query over here as well that means we have almost everything which is required up over here now let's make an API call to this particular URL using fetch. So JavaScript actually gives you a built-in function to make an API call and that function is the fetch function. So over here I would say, all right, fetch and to this fetch, you just have to pass in the request URL. So we have to build our URL dynamically using these variables which we have. So over here, I'll use a string or create a string and I'll say that first of all, I want to take this URL so I would say dollar and in curly brackets, I would take the URL. So this right here is a string literal. This is a JavaScript concept. If you're not familiar with it, using this, you could create dynamic strings in JavaScript. So we are building a dynamic string here. So this part over here is going to be dynamic. So the URL is going to be our first part. And after that, you need to add a query. So here you'll be able to see that we have everything till search. So we need to add question mark query. So after the URL, I would say question mark query along with the equal to sign. And after the equal to sign over here, we have pizza. So this pizza is a dynamic part, which we are going to get from the query, which is the actual variable here. So in order to add a variable, I'll again add a dollar sign curly bracket, add a query here. And after this, the next part, which we need to add here is the API key. So after the query, in the URL, we have and API key equals the actual API key. So after the query, I would type in and API key with K in capital. And the API key is going to be equal to this key, which we have. So I'll add a dollar sign. And in curly brackets, I would say API key. And that's it. 
Now this fetch function is going to go ahead and return us something. So let's save that particular response into a variable called as response. So const res equals fetch this. All right. Now once we have that particular response, this response which we get is going to be in form of a JSON. So you need to decode that JSON format data. So in order to decode that, what we do is we say, all right, take that particular response and then dot JSON. And let's save this data into something. So I would say const data equals this. And that's it. So if I save this, now our fetch function is pretty much ready. Now, once we have this data, let's console log that data into a browser console so as to see what exactly do we get in return. So I would say console.log data. Now, if I do this and if I go back to the browser, hit refresh, nothing happens here. And the reason why nothing happens is because we have defined this function here, but we have not called it. So inside of a use effect, you define and call the function at the very same place. So here is where we need to call that function, which is fetch food. So I would say fetch food. And as soon as I save this, if I go back here, now you'll be able to see that it automatically executes that function. That's because as I earlier mentioned, this use effect will be executed every time this app actually renders. And as soon as we make some changes to our app and as soon as we save this, it actually re-renders our app and it actually calls this function. But here, as you will be able to notice, now we have an error over here. And that's because it's saying response.json is not a function. So technically what happens here is that whenever we make an API call to this particular function, or this particular URL, the server actually takes some time to give us back a response. But this JavaScript code, which we have written here, it executes instantly and it does not wait for this data to come back. Therefore, we actually need to go ahead and tell our JavaScript code to wait for a while till this data is returned. And we want to execute this code only after the data from the fetch has been returned. Therefore, over here, we'll make our function asynchronous and we'll make this await. So here I would say await fetch, that means wait till we get the response. And therefore, whenever you're using await, you also need to use async over here as well. And async and await is again a JavaScript concept. And instead of async await, you could also use a promise as well. So in a promise, what happens is whenever you request for the data, this actually returns us a promise. And then what we do is we use dot then in order to get access to the data which is returned inside that promise. So we could perform the same action using promises as well, but using async and await is a much more better way to do. So we add an await here and we do the same thing over here as well. So we add await in front of this response.json as well. So I would say await and that's it. So as soon as I do that, now as you can see, it has also returned these promises here because as I earlier mentioned, you could use promises as well. But as now we are using async and await, instead of getting a promise, now as soon as I refresh the page, now you get the results up over here. So if you click on this one, as you can see, it gives us back an object here and that object has different properties. So out of these properties, here is where we have our data. So if I again go inside results and inside results, I again have to go back inside results. And here is where all the pizza information is present. So if you open up one object here, you have the ID of that particular recipe. You have the image over here. Then you have the image type along with the title of that particular recipe as well. So now we are getting this particular array. Now our question is how exactly could we go ahead and actually display this complex piece of information on our web page. So doing that is quite simple. So you might notice that whenever we are making a request, we are getting this array called as results. So in order to get the results directly, which is this array, as we are interested in this array, instead of console logging data, I would say data dot results. So if I do that, now it will only give me the array of objects which we are concerned with. And now we could make use of these array of objects and use these array of objects and display those array of objects up over here on our web page. So in order to get all of these objects and display them here, first of all, we have to save them inside some sort of a variable inside our application. 
And in React, instead of using plain simple variables for persistent data, we always make use of state. So in the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's learn how to create a state to save all the data which we have gotten from here inside of an array and then make use of that same array to display all of that information here on the web page. So let's learn how to do that in the next one.